All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, most of you here know who I am, but for those of you who don't, let me introduce myself. I surprisingly go by many different names here. Most of you know me as Mr. Galvan, but over the summer I got married, which is exciting, but then things really took a left turn for what people call me. So I technically go by Mr. Galvan Anderson, but most people still call me Mr. Galvan, Mr. G, Mr. Galvan Anderson, the guy who lives in Chicago. Yes, I really live in Chicago and drive to school every day. Um, or the guy who runs really fast on the treadmill in the fitness center. Um, in reference to that last one, I want to point out that I'm not trying to be obnoxious and extra during my workouts, but I do apologize to the ones who are in the fitness center trying to enjoy a peaceful workout and are stuck with the sounds of my loud feet and treadmill, which sounds like it's breaking, um, and glancing at my legs because they look as if they're about to come flying off when I come, when I am running. But what can I say? I love my intervals. So back to my name. Um, after I changed it and I got back on campus recounting summers with various students, I got to a point where people were asking me, did the pronunciation of your name change? And I merely said, what? And proceeded to walk away. Um, so with that being said, um, I have found myself at a place where people ask me, what's your name? And I just want to say, I don't know, call me whatever you want. Um, Starbucks loves that, by the way, which is why I now do mobile order. So. While I might not know what name I want you to call me, I do know who I am. And it might come to a surprise to some, but that wasn't always the case. Which brings me to what I want to talk about uh, with you today. Accepting and having confidence in who you are. So before I knew what I was going to talk about, um, I asked students what they look for in a faculty chapel. One student told me that they want the faculty to share part of them as a way to open them up to the community in hopes of gaining a better understanding of who they are, while another student said, we want the tea. Um, so while one answer may have been a bit more eloquent, they both shared the same message. Share something personal about yourself. So here we go. Now, what does acceptance even mean? Do we even really know the definition of it? The definition of it? I took my curiosity over this concept to my handy dandy iPhone and shout out to my 90s babies in the crowd for knowing my Blue's, Blues Clues reference. Um, but what I found on Google is that acceptance is defined as the action or process of being received as adequate or suitable and typically to be admitted into a group. Makes sense, right? Well, not quite to me. Um, that last bit really throws me. Admitted into a group. Growing up, I always considered myself to be an outsider. Um, my first memory of this feeling was not necessarily a bad one. I remember sitting on the rough blue carpet of my kindergarten class, listening to my teacher, Mrs. Suther, read some children's book about Thanksgiving. I'm no, rock and si I'm no rocket scientist, but I'm going to assume that this was around Thanksgiving. Um, and the only vivid, vivid memory I have from this moment is Mrs. Suther asking me, does your family celebrate Thanksgiving? And I remember thinking, what is this woman talking about? Obviously, we celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, while I didn't initially take in the fact that I was one of very few Hispanic children in an all-white classroom, I did take with me this feeling of feeling like an outsider, as I was the only student asked such an absurd question. Five-year-old Enrique was not a fan of this. And this feeling of being on the outside looking in continued as I grew up. And I want to preface this next part with the reassurance that I've always had friends and I was never bullied. Um, I was just your average student getting by, but never quite felt like I was in a specific group, uh, which can very much be a struggle. I never liked playing football during recess in elementary school, nor did I enjoy smoking cigarettes with my friends in middle school, so I just avoided both at all costs. Um, but when you surround yourself with people who are doing something that you don't like, however, you feel like an outsider. And it wasn't until I got to high school that I slowly started embracing the little nuances of my personality. I liked to sing, so I joined the choir. I liked playing soccer, so I joined the soccer team. I liked running, so I joined cross country. I was beginning to do all the different activities I wanted, but I kept worrying about what other people would think of me. I was uncomfortable with what others might say if I auditioned to the spring musical, but you know what people around me told me about my choices? Nothing. No one said anything. I was able to do all the things I loved and surround myself with people because nobody cared about what I did. But the problem was, I still wasn't comfortable. 
I was, I was still uncomfortable with the idea of participating in things that weren't traditional. I mean, how many soccer playing, cross country running, choir singing, musical starring, high school students do you know? Not many, I'm assuming. Um, so what changed? Uh, however, what changed was in my ability to slowly but surely accept those aspects of myself. One second. And it wasn't until freshman year of college where I finally came into my own. There was still a, an aspect of myself that I hadn't fully uh, accepted or admitted yet. I mean, I was a gay Hispanic male and my family had no idea. So how they came to find out was the proudest and the scariest moment of my life. So in 2011, I made a promise to myself that I would tell my parents before the year ended and start 2012 with a brand new slate. New year, new me, right? Insert eye roll here because as some of my students here know, I can't stand that phrase because of its basicness. But nevertheless, I made a promise to myself that before 2011 ended, I would tell them, and it is because of this one moment of my life that if I ever make you a promise, you can bet that I will follow through. Well, as I, as I do most things, I put it off for as long as I could. So the date was December 31st, and I literally only had 12 hours before the clock would strike midnight. Sorry for the Cinderella reference, but it just happens naturally. Um, I remember thinking, man, where did the time go? And then thinking, oh yeah, it was in the two months I spent avoiding this very moment. Got it, got it, got it, good to know. Um, so my dad told me, okay, we're gonna go to the Beaver Dam YMCA. And I eagerly asked him if I could go with him. And he quite rudely responded and questioned me and said, really? And now in his defense, let's just say my high school body was gone and I wasted no time obtaining my freshman 15 card. For those of you who don't know, it's when you're a freshman in college and instead of participating in sports, you just eat. And you eat and you don't stop eating because why would you? It's college and we're adults and we're free of our parents, etc. cetera. Um, but I digress. So bringing it back to New Year's Eve 2011. I clapped back at my dad and said, well, yeah, I want to go to the gym. I used to run cross country as if I was some big shot winning medals, which I wasn't. So off we went to the YMCA, my big reveal looming over me. And I can guarantee you that that was the longest workout of my life. I felt as if someone took away my ability to speak because throughout the car rides there and back and the workout itself, I remained silent. But as many of my friends will tell you, when I have something on my mind, I don't hide it well. So throughout our outing, my dad kept asking me, what's wrong? And I would reply like any 19-year-old harboring a secret and say, nothing. So once we got home, however, I knew I just had to rip the Band-Aid off. I told my parents that I needed to talk to them about something, so I rushed them to my old bedroom, closed the door, and just told them. Just like that. Unfortunately, my parents' initial reaction was your stereotypical reaction to your son coming out. Are you sure? Maybe it's just temporary. Maybe if you were home, this wouldn't happen, et cetera. But the one that stung me the most was when I was, you know, was when I was kind of talking to them about it. And I said, I didn't tell you because I didn't want you guys to be disappointed in me and being told back, how could we not be disappointed? Um, it was those words that, unbeknownst to my mother, still sting a bit. Quick background on that, growing up, I was always considered the good son. Uh, I got straight A's, was active in all my high school activities, and because of my two older brothers, uh, they were having their own issues with the law and substance abuse, which have unfortunately followed them to this very day, because I haven't seen or spoken to my eldest in almost two years, but that's a conversation for a different day. Any matter, it was because of this standard that I felt the pressure to keep this final facet of myself a secret until absolutely necessary. So, when did I know it was absolutely necessary? It was when I completely accepted every aspect of who I was. The truest form of acceptance that had the greatest impact wasn't when I was deemed adequate or admitted into a group. It was when I truly accepted every facet of who I was. I finally felt like myself. All my life, I never felt like I was not accepting of who I was, but I wasn't able to be honest about this aspect when I realized that I was actually just living in a cage. I was living in a lie and it got to a point where I cared more about being proud and true uh, to who I was than I cared about what other people thought of me. Now I am fortunate because my family very quickly bounced back from the shock of my news and have since not only accepted but embraced who I am. 
And that would not have been possible if I hadn't taken the plunge and fully accepted who I was. Which finally leads me to confidence. Once I completely embraced the unique individual I am, I felt so happy and confident. I felt like I could do anything, be anything, and succeed in anything because I know exactly who I am. I am confident in myself to enjoy the Pitch Perfect franchise on top of the Fast and the Furious franchise. I am confident in myself to enjoy watching the World Cup, but also going to a local musical in Chicago. I tell my students all the time that they can do anything, literally anything, as long as you do it with confidence. No one will, nor should they tell you what you need to do or who you need to be. Acceptance isn't being admitted into a group, but rather in accepting who you are. And as cheesy as it sounds, there is only one you in the world. Every single one of you sitting in those chairs brings something special and unique into this world. I know this might not resonate with everyone just yet, but hopefully one day it will. High school is tough, believe me, and if you are like my high school self, you're probably still figuring things out, and that's okay. So in the meantime, try out for that play or that basketball team, or pick up that instrument, or go up, go up and sing karaoke, or see that romantic comedy that actually looks interesting to you, but your friends will probably make fun of you. Um, it's okay to listen to a cappella or Mo Bamba. As we're listening, as we're learning in my hyphenated America class, quick shout out, um, everyone has multiple facets of themselves, and that is amazing. Do the things that make you happy. I can tell you that even though my coming out was difficult, I have since been filled with nothing but love and joy from my family. I'll even tell my mom today, Sai, New Year's Eve, the anniversary, am I right? And she'll have no idea what I'm talking about, which will lead me to say, Mom, that was the single most important moment of my life. How could you not remember when I came out? And she'll reply, oh yeah, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. So to close out, I just wanted to share with you all a moment from the happiest day of my life, a day that I never thought I'd actually have, a day that proves that no matter how difficult things are or how unique you are or how silenced your voice seems, as long as you accept who you are and have confidence in that person, anything is possible. A day where literally every single person I loved, family and friends, were in the same room celebrating me and my husband, my wedding day. Enrique. Ben. Waking up this morning, I thought I would be writing about how nervous I am and how I hope that everything would be perfect. This is it. I can't believe our day has finally arrived. This past year and a half has been building up to today and all I feel right now is calm. I am actually really calm. Calm to be marrying you because you make me feel like no matter what happens today, it will all be okay. I know that today, after all the excitement, all the tears, and the amazing memories, I will have you, my husband, to spend the rest of my life with. You, Ben, are the surest thing that I have ever known. You're my soulmate and my true love. Now let's get this party started. On behalf of Ben and Enrique, I would like to thank you all for being here this afternoon. Enrique and Ben have invited you here to this beautiful city to show you a glimpse of an important part of their love. Enrique, it has been such an incredible journey getting to this moment with you. Ben, throughout my entire life, I never saw marriage as an option for me. Isn't it astonishing, the butterfly effect of two individuals swiping right on their phones? 
Who knew by that single action I would meet the man of my dreams? It wasn't until I met you that I realized I didn't have to pretend anymore. You are the man who made me believe in marriage again, and the man that has made me believe in myself when for so long I had so little self-confidence. How lucky am I to be lucky enough to just have you. By the power vested in me, it is now my honor and delight to declare you husband and husband. You may seal your vows with a kiss. Each of us is a powerful creator of love. Each of us, every moment of every day, has the choice to dedicate ourselves to one another or to withhold our love and caring. May life's challenges be met together with courage and optimism. And may your days be filled with laughter, friendship, love, and of course, a little bit of pixie dust.